The dealer next to him uh, said that he had an 1893S Morgan dollar. Um, he graded it uh, six times at NGC. It came back a good six every single time. Um, and so he said, you know what, I'm done with this. I, I'm not really uh, having a good time. And I've, I've looked at many coins and I think this is a fine 12 um, or, or better. And so he gave the coin uh, to this guy and he sent it to PCGS. And when he sent the coin to PCGS, it came back fine 12 on its first try. Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, stopping by the Houston Coin Show today. Bought a whole crap ton of stuff. Bought actually a few uh, cold dollars as well, but uh, it's just a beautiful day in Texas. Uh, a lot of great dealers inside, but uh, let's go inside and, and show you guys around and, and then go back to the house and show you everything that we got. If you guys are uh, in the area uh, this February in 2022, I would encourage you guys to stop. I'm going to leave the information for this coin show uh, in the description, but also in the video. So, um, yeah, stay tuned and enjoy. Hello, everybody. Just made up to the light box. And day one was great. Um, day one of the Houston coin show, um, Houston winter coin show, my apologies, was pretty nice. Um, and as we've been talking about in previous videos, we try to shoot and look for uh, key day coins, better looking coins on the first day, uh, things that would be plucked up right away. And so we ended up buying a lot of those the first day, but the second day, which you guys are going to see a little bit later on uh, this week, um, we found a lot of nice coins that were beautifully toned or had very nice originality to it. And so stay tuned for that, but let's show you guys the first uh, day of, of coins. This is something common, but something nice. This is a 1881S Morgan Silver Dollar graded MS63 proof like. Um, you know, it's got that nice uh, flashy eye appeal to it. A little bit of a distracting toning on, uh, you know, 12 o'clock and uh, and 3 o'clock here. Um, but the the dealer offered it to me for a decent price. Uh, I think he offered it to me for like 100 bucks, and so most of the time we sell these coins at about 139, 142 bucks. Sometimes we can get away with it there, um, but coins like this, uh, don't, I don't have a problem selling because many, many collectors, you know, they start collecting, you know, m mainly business strike coins, and then, uh, you know, when they're starting to build on top of it, they start getting coins like this that have a little bit more eye appeal, that do demand a little bit more of a premium, but pretty cool coin, I like it, um, and let's show you guys a few key dates that we got. And what we're going to be talking about today a little bit is our um, our bigger shows better than smaller shows. And the reason why I ask this question is because uh, we, what we've been noticing lately is that we spend a bunch of money, we do a lot of things, we drive across the country, um, we spend, I ended up spending you know a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, anywhere in between there to get to a nice show. And the problem that you might run into. Um, as, as a younger dealer or as a newer dealer like myself is do you have those connections that are, are long distance? Do you have the people that when you go to a show you can sit down with them and buy a, a lot of nice stuff for a good price? Um, can you make uh, the money that you need to make to fund the trip but also make the money that you need? Um, and so we ended up going to the pan show um, this, this, past, this past few days here um, right before we got home for the Houston coin show and we found a lot of nice coins. We, we showed them to you guys. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy them and like them. Um, but when we got home and we, we crunched the numbers, you know, we'll, we'll make a little bit more than what we thought we would make. But is all that grife, all that driving, all that eating out, eating unhealthy, not exercising, um, is that something that uh, is worth it? Is that something that uh, a small coin show could do um, for us? And so it really kind of uh, threw us back and made us start to ask and question a lot about what, what we can do to uh, be more local, um, do more things locally for, for customers that we might have. 
and also you know maybe we could start setting up at local coin shows or um, finding customers that are closer to us to uh, sell us really nice coins uh, we do buy a lot of nice coins when we're out on these bigger trips um, just because they have them um, you know they're bigger dealers they uh, know what they're doing they have a lot of new and fresh inventory every time we see them but like I said the problem is sometimes you get there you spend a whole bunch of money your capital might be a little bit uh, you know stringent that's kind of what we had a little bit our capital was a little bit uh, tight because of uh, not being able to sell on the road and then when we got there it was a little bit tougher because you know uh, you know it's just we didn't have the connections that we normally do locally and so um, our you know our bigger coin shows better than smaller coin shows what's your guys's opinion have you traveled to a big coin show then what what was your thoughts on it what's your and how do you compare that kind of to uh, the smaller shows that you guys might run into but this coins pretty nice it's 18920 Morgan dollar grade AU55 by PCGS has a nice true view on it uh, Jackie hooked us up um, Jackie's been in a few shows here he was at the uh, the coin show in Austin but he was also um, at the coin show here in Houston uh, today but like I said we normally buy the key date stuff because uh, we have collectors that that like this stuff and they have all the common date Morgans kind of already stringed together but they want to start moving into coins like this um, I think a coin like this is like 150 bucks which is not too bad for a better date hey guys this is Drew welcome back uh, to uh, whiteboard sessions and today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, coin show stories and basically what that means is uh, we go around ask dealers uh, their opinions on things they tell us pretty cool uh, stories about uh, grading or points that they found and today we're going to be giving you guys a little sneak peek about a few stories we heard at uh, the Houston Winter Coin Show um, basically what, what happened to us is we felt like our PCGS grades were not what they should have been uh, we do a lot of research we handle a lot of coins and we felt like we didn't get uh, the best grades that we thought we were going to get. Um, and so we started asking questions about uh, what have been some of your grading stories um, to the dealers there. Um, and there's two dealers in particular that gave us some pretty interesting stories. And before I tell you them, uh, please don't uh, think this is any indignation against PCGS or NGC's uh, uh, grading service. It's just something that I've heard um, that I'm passing on to you is something that's interesting. But let's get into them. Um, basically, I went up to the first dealer. He had a $20 gold piece. This was way back, he said, uh, back in the 90s. Uh, the coin was graded at Mint State 64. It was like a $20 gold piece, St. Godin, something like that. Um, and full retail was like 900 bucks. And he said, I think, you know, in 64 it was 900 bucks. But he said, I think the coin's a 65. And so he submitted the coin 13 times. And on the 13th try, it went 65 and the big it was a giant spread for that coin um, and as you can see it actually grew by 10 percent in the next uh, numerical grade so that's just something that's interesting that we thought of and uh, we wanted to share with you um, they, they just have some pretty cool stories but the next story is also pretty interesting the dealer next to him uh, said that he had an 1893s Morgan dollar um, he graded it uh, six times at NGC. It came back a good six every single time. Um, and so he said, you know what, I'm done with this. I, I'm not really uh, having a good time. And I've, I've looked at many coins, and I think this is a fine 12 um, or, or better. And so he gave the coin uh, to this guy, and he subbed it to PCGS. And when he subbed the coin to PCGS, it came back fine 12 on its first try. And th then he sent the coin off, and it got capped. So um, just... A few interesting stories, um, and I think the biggest takeaway from uh, what I have to say here is that if you have a nice coin, if you looked at many of them and have experience with them, uh, PCGS and NGC sometimes don't get it right uh, several times. But if you do believe in the coin and believe in your knowledge and ability, you will get the grade uh, that you deserve uh, in its time. And so I hope you guys enjoy this whiteboard session. Let's get back to the video. Up next. This is an 1886-O, um, graded AU53 by PCGS. Was holdered a little bit uh, back, as you can see, um, by the backdrop of the slab and also the cert number. Um, as you can see, I think this coin has a little bit uh, of old cleaning on it, but it does have uh, a decent circulated look to it. Um, 
And as we flip it over, uh, someone actually purchased the VAM, uh, the VAM for it, which is interesting, VAM 1A, um, and this was slabbed in, uh, I think it was in 2013. Um, but the coin is pretty nice. Um, we got this coin from Jackie too. Um, and like I said, most, most times on the second day, if you don't buy this the first day, you end up getting hosed and not being able to, uh, you know, find the coins that are on your, your client list. Um, I have a lot of clients that like a lot of coins. And so buying stuff like this, is just something that you have to do because someone's going to come to you. Someone's going to ask, someone's going to, uh, need a coin like this and you got to be ready for when the time comes. Here's a coin that we don't buy too often. This is an 1873 uh, three cent nickel with an open three. Um, it's graded XF40 uh, by PCGS. And um, a lot of these people are looking for uh, different things for their sets, uh, things to crack out that aren't too expensive. Um, and so I kind of, you know, I wanted to put my feet in the water on something like this. I only spent like 50 bucks on this coin and, and sold it for 65 pretty quickly. Um, but it, you know, it's just something that it could start to get you that, that traction with on either your Instagram or your Facebook or your eBay. Um, something that gives you that, that grasp for other customers that, um, someone that ends up coming back to you many times and saying, you know, what do you have? And, um, that sometimes that requires work on your end to say, let me look out for more three cent nickels. Let me look out for more three cent pieces. Um, but like I said, if you guys do start to do stuff like this, start to buy newer coins and start to get those clients, you can really start to expand um, who your audience is in terms of clientele and also, you know, maybe start to buy bigger coins. Um, you guys are going to see in the next video, we bought this really stunning uh, Standing Liberty Quarter. Um, it, it's, it was just amazing. Um, it, it's very original. It was, it's a 1917 uh, D Type 2 uh, SLQ. Um, but at first I started buying cheaper SLQs and uh, more attractive SLQs and now I'm moving into bigger coins like that and uh, I just had a few people write me yesterday here here's my list go find my list and so um, having those people like that really can help you because you can find something that they like and you can make the money that you need um, to run your business successfully. Here's a coin. Uh, we don't buy too many Walking Liberty half dollars, um, but this one is a more beautifully toned example. Because when I put in the light here, you can kind of see this rainbow uh, coming down the coin towards the date. Uh, it's kind of have a little splotchiness in the fields, which is not too, not too bad. Um, but the dealer said he wanted to get rid of this coin at cost, which you know I don't blame him. Uh, you know sometimes you can get caught with stuff that you don't really have the clients for, but. You know, as you can see, I, I just like this really nice character down here, but the overall the fields are a little bit splotchy, just something that I'm not really a fan of in terms of a collector uh, for me, um, but uh, the coin is original, has a, a still pretty nice remaining luster on the reverse, and it it's starting to get that little toning um, around the rim, as you can see here, but something that I definitely want to move into in 2022 is more Walking Liberty Half Dollars. Um, there's just so many out there and sometimes I feel like they're overlooked. All right, we're showing off some more key dates here. <laughs> this is a 1900S, great AU53. Um, not the most attractive coin, but don't find too many 1900Ss that often. So I picked it up, thought it'd be nice. Um, as you can see, it's kind of got this cleany looking haze to it which, you know, it, it's not too attractive, but someone that buys this normally for me, cracks it out, puts it in one of their, uh, puts it in one of their, uh, their albums and, uh, really enjoys it. So, uh, you know, it's just something that I'm not, I'm not a fan of personally, but it's something that, you know, that I have to buy, that I like to buy for, for customers. Um, here is another one that's not too attractive, but is a, is a better date. This is an 1898S, great AU55. It's got that, you know, it's got these distracting marks here. It's got that old cleaning. Um, you know, it's it's nothing to uh, to scream home about. Um, and this is something that I want to start to do a, a lot more is be honest with you guys. Um, you know, some coins I price less because they aren't attractive, because they don't demand a premium. And so um, if you're one of those collectors that like to buy that stuff that, 
that need holes for their collection like this. I'm going to be brutally honest with you in the videos. This is not the most attractive coin, but it is a better coin. And I think some people sometimes are missing that in the coin space. You know, they hand someone a coin at a coin show and say, this is the uh, just an amazing coin, isn't it? Just a stunning example. And then I'm like, it's clean, and it's unattractive, and it demands no premium. So why are you telling me that? And the, and the dealer most of the time knows that. They're just trying to squeeze an extra few pennies out of you. Um, but if you want to have long-term business, be honest with your customers. Be honest with uh, people that ask you questions because they, they will be the ones that support you long-term. And if your honesty uh, and integrity is there, you'll be uh, a successful coin dealer. Here are a few more key dates for you guys to take a look at. This is the 1903S, uh, graded VF25 by NGC. It's got a, a unique, weird color kind of to the top left by the EP. Um, I, this coin is more original than the others that I've shown you. Um, there's no really old cleaning to it. It's just mainly circulation. Um, when we flip over the coin, you know, it's got it's not too dark and it's not too bright, um, but it is pretty pretty nice for a circulated coin. Um, and it's a better date as well. This coin actually ended up selling on our website very quickly. And so something that I want to tell you guys is that if you see a coin in our videos that isn't there, it's because it's sold quickly. It's sold already. Um, the way we film videos is a few weeks in advance. So we're trying to get inventory up to speed with our uploading schedule. So bear with us. And we're always free to message and talk to you guys on the website. I answer every single message on the website. So if you guys ever reach out on there, expect me to reply, um, expect me to help you guys out. I love to do that. I love to be, uh, I love to serve people and I've been doing that ever since I started out with my first job at Chick-fil-A. I actually started working at Chick-fil-A when I was like 16 years old. I really wanted to be uh, an operator and, uh, you know, run my own, run my own store, but Things have changed. I started finding that my hobby was coins, and I'm so thankful for where I am now. But there's two more coins I want to show you in today's video. This is a 1921 High Relief, graded AU53 by NGC. And you know, ever since the release, and I'm sure many of you guys already have your 2021 Morgan dollars and Peace dollars. Um, this coin has been hot, but it has been oversaturated. So. If you guys do end up finding coins like this to purchase and buy, make sure you're getting them for a great price. I'm going to be honest with you, I bought this coin for $195 and I flipped it for $345 very quickly. And most of these coins are selling for $375, $400. Um, and that's just something that I, I just don't want to hold on to stuff like this. When it isn't a hot market, oversaturated market, you could end up holding on to this coin for half a year, a full year, um, because everyone already has their high relief or, or they're trying to sell their high relief or the market's going to be down on it. Too many variables sometimes with coins like this. So, so be careful with high reliefs right now. It's just something that I've noticed in the market and many of the big wholesalers stop buying these because they aren't making a profit any longer. Last but not least, I want to show you uh, the last coin from the first day of the coin show. This is an 1886-0 um, graded AU53 by uh, NGC. It's got this distracting color on the right side of the coin, but sometimes you find that with circulated examples. Overall, you can see the cleany feel to it, but it's not too, uh, it's not as bad as the other ones, really. Um, and so you can kind of get a little bit of a scale or uh, a change uh, when you see cleaned examples. Some are so obvious that they're cleaned, and some that are not so obvious that they're cleaned. Um, and someone would say, why would you, why would they grade a clean example? Um, you know, why would they give a straight grade to a clean example? Um, and sometimes the grading companies have mercy on older coins like this one and coins that are older than this one. And so as you can, when you flip it over, you can kind of see the halos start to coming around the coin. Um, but overall, like I said, buying key dates is something that we like to do. Um, don't ask a giant premium for these just because they're not screaming uh beautiful but they are something that someone needs for their collection but thank you guys for watching today's video we're going to roll to the outro and uh thanks again hey guys i hope you enjoyed today's video uh we tried to show you guys the best of what we found on day one of the houston coin show 
Um, and also give you guys some cool stories about coin dealers. We have a whole ton of them to share. We have a whole ton of information to share on our whiteboard sessions. So stay tuned for more videos and like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.